Hello and welcome back. I'm very excited to start this section because we really get to dive into more of the meat of Amazon Web Services, this time focusing on EC2. So without further ado, let's click on over here to Project Omega and turn this section on and dive right in. So Elastic Compute Cloud, commonly referred to as EC2, is what we're going to be covering in AWS Essentials Section 5. We're going to cover the topics that include an overview of AWS Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon Machine Images. We're also going to have a review of instance type components. We're going to cover EBS volume basics and snapshots, how to use security groups with EC2, IP addressing, and finally launching and logging into an EC2 instance. So let's get started with our first lesson, EC2 basics. And in this lesson, we're going to cover specifically EC2 definitions, a conceptual overview of EC2, EC2 components. We're going to talk about what makes up EC2, common purchasing options. That's a very important aspect of this, and also a general pricing overview. So let's start off with a few definitions. So EC2 is an abbreviation for Elastic Compute Cloud. For a simplified definition, think of EC2 as your basic desktop computer. That's really all EC2 is. It's just a computer that you're using that's just somewhere else. It's an Amazon cloud computer that you've decided to use. And it essentially has the same parts internally as the computer that you're using right now to watch this video. In a very simplified form, just think of it simply as that. It's a computer. For a more in-depth definition, let's take a look at the AWS definition. Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon EC2, provides scalable computing capacity in the Amazon Web Services Cloud. Using Amazon EC2 eliminates your need to invest in hardware upfront so you can develop and deploy applications faster. You can use Amazon EC2 to launch as many or as few virtual servers as you need, configure security and networking, and manage storage. Amazon EC2 enables you to scale up or down to handle changes in requirements or spikes in popularity, reducing your need to forecast traffic. So what I want you to really take away from this is, again, just think of EC2 as a computer in the cloud at an Amazon data center that you're using. It's as simple as that. Now there's a lot of different variations of EC2 that you can use and that's what we're going to cover throughout the rest of this section. But also just keep in mind that the purpose of EC2 is that it's scalable, meaning that it can easily grow in size if needed. And you can launch as many or as few, again, and EC2s are virtual servers that you need. So it's scalable, you can increase the amount of compute power that you need basically on demand or instantly, and you can launch as many or as few as you like. Simple as that. Great, let's move on. So conceptually understanding EC2, I want you to picture just your basic computer and what are the components that make that up? Well, you have your operating system, either in this case, we'll just refer to either Linux or Windows. You have a CPU for your processing power. You have a hard drive, your local storage. You have a network card, something that allows you to connect to the internet. You have a firewall for security, and there's also RAM. And these should be components that you are already fairly familiar with. Now, flipping this over to an EC2 instance and its components, let's just compare these two diagrams. Instead of an operating system, when setting up an EC2 instance, you have AMIs. Instead of CPU, think of instance type. Instead of a hard drive, think of EBS. Instead of a network card, think IP addressing. Instead of a firewall, think of security groups. And for both your home computer and EC2 instances, there is just straight up RAM. Now this is an overly simplified comparison between the two, but it's not too far off in terms of the choices that you need to make when deciding what type of EC2 instance to launch. And conceptually, the way I really want you to understand this is that 
there really isn't a huge difference between an EC2 instance and a computer that you have at home. An EC2 instance is just a virtual computer in the cloud that you use and provision. And it has many of the same components that your desktop computer or laptop computer has, just with some slight variations in its naming construct and how things are categorized and grouped together. And we're gonna go through all of these options over the next few lessons. Now, an important thing to understand about EC2 is that there's different purchasing options. So let's jump over to the console here and I'll show you how to access EC2 and it's actually the first option here right under compute. And this will be your hub for launching and maintaining all of your EC2 instances. Currently we have zero instances running and by the end of this section, we will have provisioned at least one EC2 instance. Now, in terms of launching EC2 instances, there are several options that you can choose from. And these three are the most common. The first, and probably the one you're gonna use the most at the beginning are on-demand instances. So on-demand purchasing allows you to choose any instance type you'd like and provision or terminate it at any time, meaning on-demand. It is the most expensive purchasing option but for that, you get the most flexibility in terms of being able to launch one whenever you like or delete one whenever you like. You are only charged when the instance is running and billed by the hour, and you can provision or terminate it on demand, again, at any time. For reserved instances, reserved purchasing allows you to purchase an instant for a set period of time of one or three years. This allows for a significant price discount over using on demand. You can select and pay upfront, partial upfront, or no upfront. And once you buy a reserved instance, you own it for the selected time period and are responsible for the entire price, regardless of how often you use it. So it's very important to understand the difference between these two. On demand, if I just need an instance for an hour or two hours or a day, I can buy it, I can pay for what I use, and I have that flexibility, but it is the most expensive purchasing option. Reserved allows for a great discount, but I am paying a guaranteed cost, which is going to be either the cost for a year or three years. And once I sign up for that reserved instance, I am then locked in to owning that instance for that amount of time and paying that full amount. Now, optionally, there is spot pricing. Now, spot pricing is a way to bid on an instance type and only pay for and use that instance when the spot price is equal to or below your bid price. This allows Amazon to sell the use of unused instances for short amounts of time at a substantial discount. Spot pricing fluctuates based on supply and demand in the spot marketplace you are charged only by the minute, and when you have an active bid in place, an instance is provisioned for you when the spot price is equal to or less than your bid price. And provisioned instances automatically terminate when the spot price is greater than your bid price. Let's hypothetically say you're paying $2 an hour for an on-demand instance. You can put in a bid price or a spot price for say 20 cents an hour for that same instance type. And if the spot market for that instance type goes below 20 cents per hour, then it will automatically launch and provision the instance for you and you will have that instance to use at the price of 20 cents per hour for as long as the spot price is below your bid price. But the second the price goes above your bid price, then you will lose access to using that EC2 server. So with this option, you can get the lowest price per hour, but you also have the least amount of flexibility, meaning that in a given week, maybe you'll only get access to an EC2 instance at your price for a few hours. Maybe you'll get luckier and you'll have access for a few days, but it's the market price that determines that, not your demand. And in the console, to select these different types of purchasing options, you have instances, which is where you can launch an instance on demand, spot requests, where you can put in a spot price, and reserved instances, where you can go in and purchase a reserved instance. So those are the three main ways that you can purchase EC2 instances. And it's important to understand and know the difference between the three. 
in the rest of this course, we're going to be working with on-demand instances. And as you start to learn AWS, this will probably be the most common option that you choose. In terms of specific pricing, how are you charged for using EC2? Well, you are charged based upon which purchasing option you select, which we just reviewed. You also charge depending on the instance type, and this is the instance processing capacity, in this case, Think CPU, and they fall into several categories, which include general purpose, compute optimized, GPU optimized, memory optimized, and storage optimized, and we're going to go into these in more detail when we get to our instance type lesson. There's also EBS optimized, AMI type, data transfer in and out of the instance, and also pricing can vary based on region. There is free tier use available for EC2 for the on-demand purchasing option and only one specific instance type, and we will see that in practice when we actually go into provisioning an EC2 instance later on in this section. And as always, before doing any major usage of EC2, please follow this link and check out all the various ways that you can be charged because EC2 can be very inexpensive to use and using the free tier you can do a lot with out being charged anything but some of the higher end instance types and storage capacities become extremely expensive and can cost a lot of money to run so you have to be very very careful with what you launch and provision while using EC2 so with that we will conclude this lesson thank you for watching you may now move on